Hello. I'm going to say a few words about the program Free Your Soas. Mostly about how this program differs from standard therapeutic approaches that use strengthening, stretching, and manipulation. Also about the structure of the program. I'm Lawrence Gold, developer of the program, which I created actually for my own benefit because I was having psoas problems. The program Free Your Psoas uses a brain-based technique rather than a muscle-based technique. What we're doing is recovering voluntary control of the movement and tension of the psoas muscles. So let me say a little bit about the way people lose that control. Psoas troubles occur generally as a result of an injury to a leg or a foot, not to the psoas muscle. And it's not the tissue injury that causes it, but the pain that causes the change of muscle tension in the psoas muscles. When a person hurts a foot, they maybe turn an ankle or they cut their foot or stub, or stub a toe, what do we do? We shift weight of that leg by lifting up on that side. And that lifting up also involves bringing the knee somewhat forward. So we're lifting the knee forward. And the muscular action that does that occurs in the psoas muscle of that side muscles actually because there are two branches of the psoas muscle and the flexors of the hip joint on that side and the flexors lie where the pants pocket of trousers is so you have one of course on each side it's underneath where the pocket would be that's generally where the hip flexors are the hip flexors bring the knee forward and turn the knee inward the psoas brings the knee forward and turns the knee outward. So in walking, when that side of the hip comes forward, the combination of balancing between the hip flexors and psoas ideally aims the knee straight forward in the line of motion. And you can see that in the movement of the actors James Dean and Fred Astaire in their films, both of who had excellent movement dynamics. So what happens in the case of an injury is that cringe response, that tightening up. And during the whole period of healing, there's an automatic reaction to maintain that protective response long enough to form a tension habit, which is resident in the levels of the brain where reflexes live and out of reach of voluntary muscular control. That's how the tension pattern forms. And because it's a habit pattern, manipulation of the psoas muscle and of the hip flexors doesn't work. Stretching doesn't work. In fact, stretching generally doesn't even reach the psoas muscle because it gets, in effect, intercepted by the more surface hip flexor muscle, the gluteus minimus. So efforts to free the psoas by manipulation go up against the self-protective contraction action in that region and it turns out to be a rather unpleasant or and ineffectual experience. This program uses a brain-based action pattern that every animal including humans with a backbone has. It's related to yawning and everyone in the world has seen a cat or dog do it. It's called pandiculation and it's a fancy word for yawning. Only pandiculation applies not just to the mouth and jaws, but can be applied to any tension pattern in which a person is stuck. And what happens is a very rapid change of control from the involuntary reflex level of the brain to the voluntary control level of the brain through which we control ordinary movements. It occurs quickly. And it's a durable change when a person has been stuck in involuntary reflex. When you reforge the connection to voluntary control, it is a stable, lasting change. 
may not happen all at once. It generally happens by stages with practice of uh, somatic education exercise that uses the pandicular response. Now, I've already alluded to the fact that the psoas doesn't work by itself. It works in concert actually with the whole movement system for the sake of maintaining balance. The psoas muscles being core muscles, they operate from the inside out and the psoas muscles run from the inner groin into the pelvis behind the organs and attaches on the spinal column right about the level of the diaphragm. In fact, the tendons of the psoas muscles interfit with the tendons of the breathing diaphragm. And so alterations in tone of either the diaphragm or the psoas affects the other. Which is why in this program the first exercise is locating the center of breathing. And incidentally the second exercise works with the relationship between the psoas and the hip flexors and also the rotators of the thigh at the buttock which have the dual action of bringing the knee back, the leg back as in propulsion, walking, and in turning the knee outward where the hip flexors turn the knee inward. So you see there's a dynamic interplay. So the second lesson deals with that and so on with the remaining seven lessons of the program. We're working with the entire movement system. If you change the psoas forcibly through stretching or if you were to do a somatic education exercise just for the psoas muscle, you would find that the tension tends to return because the overall pattern of which the psoas activity is a part hasn't changed and so it in effect calls the psoas back into the pattern from which you've just extricated it through manipulation or through even pandiculation. That's why you have to deal with the entire movement pattern, which is what this program does. Now there's another big distinction between this approach and the standard therapeutic approaches of strengthening, stretching, and manipulation. And that has to do with comfort. Somatic education exercises are not stretches you always work within your comfort zone. Things work out better that way. You get a better change of your ability to control, in effect to learn control, when it's a comfortable experience than if it's an uncomfortable experience. In fact, forcible manipulations that hurt trigger the cringe response that makes the psoas tighten up again. So standard approaches, strengthening, stretching, and manipulation work against themselves. They work against the intended result. The only pain you should expect to experience in this program is the pain for which you got the program, not from the exercises. The exercises are inherently comfortable if done as instructed. And the way you cannot do them instructed, one way is to work too hard or too fast. You might precipitate a cramp. Well, it's easily remedied, but it's not pleasant. So the instructions are to work within your comfort zone. That's true for the entire program. Now, in addition to the nine basic re-coordination lessons of this program, there's also a series of much shorter movement lessons which go into the self-maintenance section of the program. And you do the self-maintenance when you've gotten yourself pain-free and then it's just a way of reinforcing the changes and at some future time should you have a bit of a relapse, a little flare-up of psoas tension which has not been the case in my experience and the people I know of but it's a possibility. Uh, you would start with a brief refreshment with the maintenance exercises that may do it for you. If not, a short passage through the main re-coordination exercises, the main part of the program. <clears throat> should do the trick, should get you comfortable again. One of the reasons that might happen is if a person has quit practicing the exercises prematurely. They really haven't gotten the full result yet and so the likelihood of a, a bit of a flare-up is much higher than if a person has thoroughly worked through the program and they haven't stopped prematurely. They've worked it through to the end. 
So the program itself, as you by now know, comes in two sections. The first section is, we might call it the self-correction section. That's on the DVD set disc one. And the maintenance exercises appear on disc two, which has considerably less content because the exercises are much shorter. The program is also available by electronic download. And the electronic download includes two kinds of files. One is suitable for burning DVDs. And there are two formats, depending on where you live in the world, you'll choose either the NTSC format for North America or the PAL, P-A-L slash C-CAM, S-E-C-A-M format and use that for burning the DVDs so that you can play them on your equipment. The other kind of file format is MP4 and that plays any place in the world on a computer or on a device capable of reading MP4 files. So what I've gone over here is the difference between this program and standard therapeutic options, how it works, what the program consists of and why, and the two different media on which you can get the program. Uh, my name is Lawrence Gold, and as I said, I developed the program for my own sake, and I wish you well. <laughs>